Well, greeting once again, everybody. Uh, I'm glad that you are tuning in to, to watch this time of devotional. You know, we're here today by the baptismal font. The symbol of baptism is such a wonderful symbol for us. You know, I've already had some families talk about when they're going to be able to baptize their children who have been born since the last time we were able to worship in this sanctuary together. Hopefully that day will come soon. But as I was thinking about that and about this baptism, this symbol that we have of welcoming uh, new folks into the life of the church as, as members and part of the family of God, I got to thinking about the ministry of John the Baptist. You know, John the Baptist's ministry is, is in some ways foundational to, to what we do when we celebrate this sacrament in our churches. John the Baptist was a bold character. He was, he was bold and he was strong, and he, he came into his ministry with this bold confidence. He was not afraid to challenge all those who dared to listen to his message. John's message was one of repent for the kingdom of God is, is going to come near. And he challenged the Jews and the Jewish authorities of the day to repent and to begin again. But he also challenged the governing authorities too. He challenged them to live moral and upright lives. And, and when John the Baptist sees Jesus coming to him, his confidence that this is the one whom God has called brought him to the place where he is able to boldly proclaim, behold, the Lamb of God. That was this bold John the Baptist. But you know, his boldness and his confidence also got him into trouble. In fact, the things that he said against Herod and Herod's uh, life, his morality, was, was the, what led exactly to uh, John's imprisonment and eventually his death. And yet, John seemed to continue to be one of those people who were just sure about all that he did. And yet there's one moment, even for John the Baptist, when his confidence seemed to be shaken. I mean, he began to sound as if he was unsure, perhaps of himself, perhaps of who Jesus is, maybe of both. But he needed to know in this one moment of his life that he could trust that Jesus was who he thought he was. And so this story is told uh, both in Matthew's gospel and in, in uh, Luke's gospel of a time where it seems as if John the Baptist's confidence is shaken. So I'm looking at Matthew chapter 11, beginning at verse 2. Now, John is in prison. He has been in prison for his challenge against Herod. And while he is in prison, that's where he begins to wonder if all that he had said and all that he had done and all that Jesus was, was in fact correct. And so we hear this. When John heard in prison what the Messiah, that is Jesus, was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. You see, this was... Jesus' message to John in response to that question, are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? Associate Professor of Biblical Studies Caroline Lewis calls this question a heartbreaking question. She says that because in her observation, she says place changes our perspective. The place that we find ourselves in can often change our perspective about who we are, about who God is, about who we and God are together in this world. She goes on to observe that she says no longer is John in this vast and open wilderness. No longer is John baptizing the multitude who come to him to be baptized in the Jordan. No longer are the crowds listening to his words, for now John is in a different place. John is in a prison cell. And in this prison cell, blocked from all that he had been doing, he needs to hear if Jesus is the one. 
she goes on and says, place changes perspective. When you are in prison, your questions change. When you are captive, your yearnings change. When your freedom to roam has been taken away, you then have to alter your sense of freedom. And that freedom can find you asking questions that you have not risked to ask before. Questions you have not dared to voice in the past. Yeah, if you're in prison, your questions change. If you're captive, your questions and your yearnings change. But let me also add, when you're in quarantine and it disrupts your life, when you're in the midst of a pandemic that interferes with yourself and with the way in which you have found comfort, when you see the world in turmoil, questions happen. Your questions change. And I don't know if you're like me, but there have been times during this difficult time where I found myself wondering. John's question are you the one, or should we expect another? Is a question not just about Jesus and about the truth of Jesus as the Messiah, but is also about himself and about his role and all that he has been doing in his ministry. And you know, there are times I know other pastor friends are asking that same thing. Was this ministry that we are a part of really what it was all about? I know that for many of you, perhaps, as you find yourself separated from your community of faith, not able to come into your places of worship, you may begin to ask yourself, how could God allow this? Is God truly in control? You see, that's what John was really asking. Are you the one? Are you the one, or, or are we to wait for another? Jesus' answer was you need to understand things are happening that perhaps you can't see. The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame are able to walk. You know, we look around at this world and it's easy for us to focus on the negative things. It's easy for us to focus on the broken things. And yet we can also begin to see a change that is moving over people. Those of us who, who, who don't allow the prison or the quarantine or the isolation to define us might begin to see glimpses of hope and those who reach out to you, those feelings of hope that, yes, God is in fact with you. That's what John needed when he was in a prison cell. And perhaps that's what we need right now. Are you the one or should we expect another? Look around, says Jesus. Look for the glimpses and the presence of me in the community of faith that upholds you, in the ways in which things are happening beyond your comprehension. Sometimes we have to look long and hard to see those things. And yet, the confidence that I believe came to John in that prison cell is the confidence that we need as well. For the baptismal waters that came to us as children or as an adult or whenever we experienced that baptism was a welcome into the community of faith and it was a promise that was sealed in the hope of the gospel. God is with us and God is doing and will continue to do amazing things. Thanks so much.